I just found the lizard racing track. This is funny. That's it. That's what they used to race the lizards around. So this sign here says, ever since the first organised horse races were held in Yulo in 1878, race meetings have played a central role in the life of this town. Dispersed widely across the Peru's Mulga lands as they were, the locals needed a draw card to get them to saddle up and ride the long dusty miles into town. Mix a race meeting into the festivities however and you could be sure of drawing a crowd. In 1968, lizards took centre stage at the Yulo Racing Calendar. By this time, horses were fast becoming a distant memory on local properties as motorcycles took over stock work. Without a su local supply of quality horses to underpin local race meetings, Peru residents turned their attention to the more intensive sport of lizard racing. This is the funny part. The most memorable day for lizard racing in, at Yulo occurred in August 1980 when champion Phil, Frilly Woodenhead flashed across the line in a world record 1.8 seconds. Woodenhead was however later beaten by a Sydney cockroach flown in specially for the occasion by members of the Sydney Cockroach Club. Unfortunately at the end of the special match race disaster struck. The Cockroach Club members were all excitedly jumping around when one of them landed on the champion insect. A memorial service was held at the pub and a plaque later installed here on site. Oh my god, a memorial service for a cockroach. And here lays the memorial plaque for the dead cockroach. Just a little bit more to this one. The first lizard race was held in Yulo in 1967 and quickly became one of the first outback events with crowds exceeding 5,000 some years. The races soon became a part of a week-long festival with Kanamala and Yawa also part of the festivities. That's the Yulo Queen pub, John. But I've got an interesting story about one of the publicans in, in like years ago, I wouldn't imagine it's now. Isabel Gray was better known as the Yulo Queen. Ooh. The reason being she was a publican, a storekeeper and a prostitute. But she was married. She was married? Yeah. She was married. That one. So historically opal miners from Yawa would gather at this pub, right? And she had a very tolerant husband Whoa. who figured out that if she offered her services, um, they could make money. Is she still there? <laughs> I don't know what year that was. Anyhow, so yeah, apart from... Like 40 bucks on a Cabarro. <laughs> no? So, I, I, look, there was so much information on her. Google Isabel Gray Publican at Yulo because that is, it's freaking hilarious that the story that was that was on Google about her and her um, interest in money make, money making schemes. She loved her opals, so the opal miners used to pay her with opals as well, as well as cash. Wow! But yeah, it's a really interesting thing. So Google it. We should set up in town. Eh? No, we, could, we could make a lot of money. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> let's go look at right, let's go. down from the hotel. This is nice, isn't it? Dedicated to all those, dedicated to all who served and to the memory of those who died so that we may live in peace. Peru River Sub Ranch 2016.
Yeah, and thank you guys for your service. Yep. That's so nice, isn't it? It's lovely. Okay, John, this is the Yulo flood truck. It's an old Dodge. And it was raised in order to be able to drive through floodwaters, carrying people and goods through to the other side of the river. You know, we could take that out at um, Glasshouse Mountains, but, you know, I think it would be defected. <laughs> yeah. The truck could take on the 1.2 metre Peru River floodwater safely. Oh, oh, there's a sign here anyhow. but. Cool. That is cool, isn't it? This is the Yulo General Store. When the first account of the new township of Yulo was printed in 1881, it listed the five key services a place needed in order to qualify as a bush town. These were a hotel, a store, a saddler, a butcher and a smithy, and Yulo had them all. Today, while the saddler and butcher and Smithy may be gone, the general store and the pub remain. They underpin Yulo's importance as the Paru's community hub. These are quite cheap actually, say two dollars twenty three. Oh is it? Yeah. That's alright. We're running out of water, John, in the caravan. The general store's close. It's Monday. But, but we might, might ask across at the patchwork shop everyone maybe. Must know when we come through because everyone's always closed. Always. So that person's last person that put diesel in, 156 litres, and it cost them $336. I mean, a truck or something, maybe a big long range tank. All right, there's an air raid shelter somewhere here. Let's go find it. Oh, is it? Yeah. This must be it, John. Here you go down the stairs and clear into the tunnel. The air raid shelter, the rusted steel archway half buried in the ground that you can see from here is an air raid shelter constructed in 1942. This was a devastating year for Australia as fears of a Japanese invasion grew and aerial attacks on both Darwin and Broome occurred within three weeks of each other at the end of summer. These confirmed the power of the long-range Zero fighter, fighter and bomber airplanes to wreak havoc far away from their home base, either on land or aboard an aircraft carrier. While Yulo was of limited strategic value to the war, an unlikely target for attack, it was in the direct flight path from Darwin to Melbourne. It also provided a communication link used to wire information between the major cities. With this in mind, an Anderson Air Raid Shelter was installed here by local contractor Hilti Newsom. These days, the shelter is a bit rusty and doesn't support the sandbags and grass that once hit it from aerial view. Oh, when first right. built, it could hold about 50 people standing up. So this air raid shelter, they had grass grown over the top of it and um, sandbags. sandbags. That makes more sense. And it made it look like it from the air, they thought it was a dog kennel. Oh. Apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah, to make it appear to look like a dog kennel. Wow, interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. But I did read that you could actually walk through it, but no, um, it pretty now. much looks blocked off. Show me what you see in the bomb, John. <laughs> Go on. John thinks the rain's coming. Show everyone what you can see. It's coming. Look. It's see? not. Bring the phone closer. See the black dot up there, everyone? That's Yulo. See the rain going in the opposite direction? It's coming this way. It's not. It's going in the opposite direction. I don't talk to you anymore. Oh, yeah. That's good. Be nice and quiet for a while. While here in Yulo, we went to... Yulo Queen Opal Centre. Top, Anyhow. Top, top blokes in there, isn't that lady? Really nice people in there. And the lady. Anyhow, I never used to like opals because I only ever saw the like the mother of pearl type colouring. Until we went to Lightning Ridge, we have got a video on that, Chambers of the Black Hand, and I saw unbelievable colours. a video of that one we liked, that black opal? Mm, I don't think so. Anyhow, I'll show you what I bought. 
So this is called a boulder opal. How beautiful is that? It does look better in the sun. It looks amazing. But wait, there's more. See, I like the blues, but look at this. It's like a greeny blue. Turquoise, maybe. So I thought, oh, why the hell not? John chose this one. And I chose the other one. Of course, the other one was way more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> of course you choose the D ones. <laughs> that was interesting what, he, interesting what he said, though. These are harder than the ones at Lightning Ridge. Yeah. Uh, Cooper Pedy. They're harder than the ones at Cooper Pedy. Cooper Pedy. Yeah. yeah. Cooper Pedy opals, they don't recommend that you wear them in water because they're soft opals. But these opals, these ones are from Quilpie. Oh, it looks beautiful on you, John. Let me just zoom in on that. Don't you think that just looks wonderful Match on my him? Eyes. Oh, just divine. It matches your, actually matches your eyes. Oh, don't think. It's blue. Yeah. Oh. It's lovely. You can be kind sometimes. I'll save the smartest comments when you turn it off. <laughs> Anyhow, back to this one. We liked this one because of the shape of it. It was just an unusual shape. Get closer. That's actually a good idea what he's done, you know. He's bent his cards over and stapled them. There. Can you see that now? Look at it. Anyhow, that was my little treat. Um, now I'm going to give John a treat. He doesn't know where we're going. And he doesn't research the areas we come to, so he definitely doesn't know what we're doing. Come along for this next bit of the video. Are you excited? Does it involve full driving? No. It Race doesn't. cars? Does not fall involve none of that. None of the above. Well, I'm definitely excited. <laughs> You're going to like it, trust me. Okay. <laughs> Here we go, John. Here we go. Where are we going? We're going for a well, surprise. You've got to tell me. I'm driving. No, no, no. Okay, no. I'm just going to tell you. Went and go over the bridge. Let's go. Okay. Let's see how good I can film holding this. It's not far up the road here, John. Up the road? Yeah, there's nothing up here. Yeah, no. It's not far up on your right hand side. Okay. For a bushwalk. Well, there is a bushwalk up here actually. I feel like maybe just go a little bit slower. It's on the right hand side. Slower? I'm doing like 45. Well, I'm not really sure where it is. Oh, that's that sign we could see from the bridge. That's the nature drive. We're oh, not going there. I like we didn't walk there. Nature yeah. drive? We should go for a drive through there. You're going to watch me, John. <laughs> I think this is it, John. Turn right. turn right into here. Into here? Yeah. Read the sign. Oh, we don't want to drive and read. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Read the sign here. Adhesion. Oh. Mud baths. That's where we're going. Mud baths. So. Okay. Drive in there. Is this free? No. 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 So. We've got a. I don't know. I don't know where we're going. Old mud on us? Yeah, that's what we're doing. What's that? Look at all these quirky little things. Just a hut with all quirky little things it's with stuff there you go it's a hut with stuff the whole place is full of old machinery look at this John it's the what's what is it wall
these look like forceps that got Jessica out. <laughs> no? I don't think so. Yep. This is your back area. We do have this in the middle. That's that stretch bar. Yep. And then we've got the floor back area. If you're wanting to film that one, go ahead. Okay. I'll just check up on yours. All right. All right. So they've got, so I don't know if you heard that, but they've got three bath areas. This one down the back is four baths, but someone has booked it for tonight. So we weren't able to get this area. And it has views. Look at this. If you're sitting in this bath here. Oh. That's so pretty. And the shower room is in there. Wow. But anyhow, so we're up this one. Up as high as you like. Okay. Make it whatever temperature you like. Mm -hmm. This one is longer and this one is deeper. Okay. Right, eh? So we've got the mud in that one already. That's right. That's so you can see what it looks like. Or you can feel it as well. But before I put the mud in the Oh, that is hot. <laughs> you need to cool it off. Definitely. Okay. All right, so here's that clay. That This okay. is why everybody comes out here. So have a feel of that. It's not muddy. It's not No, smelly. it's not gritty or anything. Yeah, it doesn't stain anything. No. Okay. All right, so this is what goes into your cup. One of the minerals in that is magnesium. And magnesium is great for... Um, relaxing your nerves and muscles and of course if you if you soak in there for half an hour you might have that sort of heavy lethargic feeling nothing wrong with that some people do absorb the minerals faster than others okay. but especially if the water's super hot okay right, but you don't need to make the water hot for the treatment to work okay so what happens is you're soaking in there initially up to half an hour yep. so it's when your pores open up you extract toxins from your skin mm -hmm. and you absorb these minerals like a sponge Yep. After half an hour, you hop out of the bath, dry yourself a little bit. This is an absorbent towel. It's made from natural fiber out of pine. You don't have to be perfectly dry, but the second stage to your treatment, which is this mud, yep. works better on dry skin. Okay. okay. When you put the mud on, just scoop it out and you pat it. Oh, don't rub it, it. Just pat it all over your face, head to toe. Cover as much of your body as you can. It is slightly different pH level to that, okay. but it's the same stuff. Yep. So it exfoliates and ties up. All right. It will take about five to seven minutes for it to set on your skin, mm -hmm. so you'll feel it tightening like a face mask. Uh -huh. Or you see it all wrinkly. Don't wash it off. Just with the muds, you hop back into the same tub. And you After about ten off. minutes, you're saying. So okay. Yeah. Well, once you feel it tightening like a face mask, okay. right. get back in the bath. Yep. Soak it off. Um, you can use these face washes to get rid of the mud mm -hmm. while you're in the tub. And then the last stage is your shower, and you'll be squeaky clean. It's okay. really like a rinse. And here's the shower here. All and right. This is your moisturizing cream made from aloe vera. Okay, so half an hour. So let's say so How do you like it so far? It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's not that bad. It's hot. It's crazy. I just put my hair in it too. It's my one. Your hair in it? Yeah, she said put your hair in it because it's got silicone in it. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's hot. I think I need more water here though. Mm -hmm. I won't tell you what John hasn't got on underneath the water. No? <laughs> no, no. Is it hot? Yeah. Could be hot. Yeah, I don't know. It might be. I don't know. It's all right. First, I thought it was going to be way too hot, and it was. But once you're in here and you just lay in here, it doesn't feel as hot as what it was. Do you think that, John? Yeah. Anyhow, she said to put um, my head in the water because the minerals. What was it? Part of the clay. It's the got silica, silicon, silica. silica in the yeah. clay. And she said it's good for your hair, so I've been put my head underwater. This clay we're going to use when we smother our body with clay. It's 40, 40 million years old or something like that. 40,000 years old. Something like that. So I should look younger when this is all finished. Younger? Yeah. That's not miracle stuff. He's an asshole. What's that? You eating already? I'm looking younger already. 
Oh, you are, for sure. That's my last. Wait until we put the mud on us. Oh, I'll be 15 again. I'm going to put it on John's back. Woohoo! Might touch your butt crack, John. Oh, you didn't dry your back, doofus. Got to dry. I never dry my back, you know. Yeah, but you're supposed to dry your back. I never dry my back. Well, it's not going to stick properly if you don't dry your back. No? No, it's not the same. <sighs> you doofus. My boobies. Go turn back that way so I get some mud. Oh boy, that's that's really close. Okay. <laughs> so now we're gonna lather ourselves with mud. Oh. Get a tub of mud. <laughs> what are you hiding, John? Hang on. It's, it's cold, okay. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> scare me. How's my back? All right, I think That's I should. Oh, oh. <laughs> Looks like you got a fake nose on. All right, well, hold, you hold this and I'll put the water in yours now. Oh, I barely even see you. You can't see my nipples. Can't see anything. Are you nice and warm? Yeah, I'm here now. Look what we got to eat. It's floating. I get two of those because Tracy doesn't like them. Nice and relaxing. How are you feeling over there? It's really nice. Last bit of treatment, the cream. I think I'll put too much on this side. Yeah, you need, you need to use a towel to wipe off like I did. All right, Johnny. What do you think of that? Good. No, honestly. No, honestly, it was good. Honestly, it was, good. It was $90 good. for 90 minutes. So really, when you break it down... It's a dollar a minute. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, when you break it down further than that. So with a bath, there's someone put mud in, yeah, okay, yeah, listen to me, yeah. All mate. right, I'm with you. Then you get out and you put more mud on you. Yeah. And you get back in and you wash it off. Yeah. Then you have a shower for 90 bucks. No, really, guys, no. It is. It was good. It was, it was relaxing. It. Yeah, I just want to know when we're getting our nails done next. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. It was I, I enjoyed it. I think, would you recommend people to come here to the Yulo yeah, Artesian yeah, yeah. mud bus? I think I've got mud yeah. all through my hair, though, now. Well, look, like 17. Yeah. Shit, I'll be good in jail. <laughs> 17, no, you leave with 17. Oh, okay. Anyhow. <laughs> oh my god, it never surprises me, Red. <laughs> really. You couldn't rehearse this shit, eh? <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the oh. caravan. Alright, John, we're going to finish yep. um, this video here. Yep. We're leaving Yulo. Yep. So, um, yeah, what stay great, here. What it's a, a nice little spot. It's a great spot, yeah so much room so thanks for watching we're heading now to um yawa and then on to thagaminda thagaminda so see you next week thanks for watching thanks, guys. bye